Now be sure to watch this video all the way through to see how you can save money on your marine electronics upgrades and more. Wow, it is so windy today, but that's okay because I'm not going out anywhere. I am working on this for you guys. Well, mostly for me and Anchor Girl, but as you can see, I've already started uh, taking apart the old Raytheon crapola off the dash here, and uh, I'm going to get that one out and replace with the uh, start replacing the panels, which I'm going to have to uh, just to make sure just so that the Garmin fits. Now, I don't know how much voiceover I'm gonna be able to do today because it is Saturday at the marina and it's starting to get noisy and boisterous in the background with different music playing, so uh, just bear with me. Now, as you can see, I got all new dash panels, which I alluded to, because once this unit comes out and those guys come out, there's gonna be big holes that the new stuff will not cover everything. So, this one here, boom is going to go there and that's where the cutout is for the already for the new Garmin and the guys at Flounder Pounder Marine slash uh, SeaRayParts.com were good enough Oop, let's turn this over here a little bit let me see if I can get this situated without dropping and crashing anything so here is the replacement panel and um, all I had to do was give them the models of the equipment that's going to go on in and they already have the uh, the templates for all that stuff so they were good enough to laser cut this out for me and look at that they even put the mounting screw locations in so there we go here comes the boom boom music so I'm gonna make this quick so that is where that's gonna fit nicely just bear with me for two seconds and that's gonna look beautiful Okay, all right, hopefully you don't hear the music in the background. Well, some people would call it music, I wouldn't. Uh, so the biggest part of this job is gonna be replacing, not replacing, but removing all these switches, taking them out, and then putting them into the new panel because of course these switches are all wired from behind, so I have to disconnect the wires, pull the unit out, pop them in the new one, hook the wires back up, so that's gonna be the most time consuming part of this job. Plus there's some backlit panels going here for the switches. Okay, so this is what I was referring to. There's a bazillion wires back here that I have to disconnect separately. And then these switches will just pop out uh, front ways. I already looked at this last weekend, but it was getting too late in the day to start with this. The problem, as always, is thank you very much, C Ray, for leaving hardly any extra wire. That's really tight. Actually, I can make that work. It'll be a bit of a pain. But while I'm at it, I'm going to clean this all off because these wires are all really ooky looking. 
Boy, do you uh, remember the cigarette commercials from back in the 70s where they were pushing cigarettes for women? <laughs> and the slogan was, you've come a long way, baby. Well, I do. Look at that. A little compact. The new Garmin is compared to this old cathode ray tube Raytheon from 1980s, or sorry, early 1990s technology. Well, late 1990s, Paul, get with it. Yeah, much, way more better. This thing weighs a ton. Just a ton, look at that. Ooh, heavy, heavy, heavy. This thing's got to weigh <laughs> 15 pounds easy, if not more. Okay, look at they radio, labeled everything. Radar, NMEA, and other stuff. So this all gonna go, so I'm gonna disconnect it right now, just make sure those wires are not gonna be in the way or power just sitting there and going behind the dash, because that's not needed. And then I'm going to take out this thing here too, which has some sort of screen on it. What it does, I don't know, oh, GPS Lorraine. Yeah, well the Lorraine antenna's already gone, so. It's never gonna do anything. So, like I said, I want to disconnect this, get it out, disconnect it, make sure there's uh, no live wires floating around back there. Okay, real quick, I just want to show you what we have going on on this panel before I remove it completely. Let's start on this side. This is the JL uh, audio stereo head unit, and this is the old Raymarine uh, depth. Well, the Tri Data system, so it's depth, speed whatever else and then this guy here and then finally here this is the base control for the stereo and it does work so this is going to be relocated that will be re relocated well in the same spot on the new uh, dash there's also this which sorry I forget to mention that's a USB or a 1 8 inch the stereo inlet or input so if you want to plug something else into it and this will also charge but it's only gives out one volt so I have a, a different one so I'm gonna probably relocate that down below down there because I do have a dual USB charger which will probably go nicely in that spot which will also shows me the uh, voltage same as I put in the last boat and then this goes and then over here is gonna be the new uh, Garmin this fish finder depth finder and whatever else it does it's going to show me speed and there's actually a little uh, GPS blotter built into that no charts but you'll see when I get it hooked up what it does so I'm just gonna open this up real quick see, oops sorry that was me and that's that so happily I have extra lots of extra wire for that base control I can relocate it these two units go and then this one, lots of extra wire too, so I can relocate it down a little bit farther. And this is gonna stay in the same general spot. And if you look way down there, you will see the JL audio symbol, or sorry, logo, because that is the amplifier for the stereo. And if we look this way, you can see it's got big, heavy duty power leads go into it. Sorry, it's not bright enough. There you are. So I just got to clean that up. That's going to stay in the same spot. I don't have to play with that at all.
Now, as this boat had been factory equipped way back in 1998 with the whole Ray, Ray Marine Raytheon system, it also had the tri data which included showing your depth. When I initially bought the Garmin Striker, I had ordered it with a transom mounted transducer. However, uh, due to timing and Im importing the boat into the country and blah, 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 uh, I did not have an opportunity to mount that transducer. So I tried to get it to work with the transducer that was on the boat, contacted the manufacturer, Airmar, uh, and I was told that it was not compatible. So. Through my research, I discovered that there's something called a shoot-through transducer. Now, traditionally, one would have a through-hull transducer, which is actually drill a hole into the hull and set the transducer so it's going right through there into the water. Or, like I mentioned, a, a transom-mounted transducer, which I've installed on past boats. But this is what is called a shoot-through transducer. And that is a real simple installation. It's simply... Uh, affixes to the inside of the bottom of the hull make sure it's a nice clean area and uh, it's a two piece system and the bottom piece that you affix to the to the base nice and clean area lots and lots of silicone put it in the spot where it's supposed to be follow the instructions make sure it's all orientated correctly and then one has to actually add a little bit of um, antifreeze into there because it needs fluid Put that uh, the actual transducer mounted into it, run the cable up to the Garmin and voila and it works and I have tried it even at speed, different conditions, different depths and it holds its depth all the time. I'm very impressed and very glad that I was able to do it that way. You got to make sure it's going to be compatible if you're thinking of doing that, make sure it's compatible with the equipment that you're going to be attaching it to as well as they recommend, strongly recommend that it has to be a solid uh, it has to be a solid non-cord hull of a maximum thickness. I know for a fact that this hull is thicker than what they're recommending, but it worked for me. Okay, just uh, did the final power connection for the radar. And um, of course there's an inline fuse. This, all this fuse holder and the fuse came with the whole assembly. So I just had to connect. So all I got to do now is pop this unit out. Oops. Well, I didn't want that on them, did I? And uh, I'm going to power it down. Sorry, did not realize it was on. Shutting off. Boom, there she goes. And I'm just going to put this uh, micro SD card in, which has the software updates. So I'm going to plug that in and then turn this thing on. And it should run through its uh, update software thing. <laughs> Okay, micro SD card is plugged in. Again, I have to plug it into the back of this unit, which is a bit of a pain, but let's fire it up and see what happens. And it's supposed to go through uh, a welcome menu insofar as do you want to do the software update and then it should do its thing and take as long as it's going to take. Probably going to take a few minutes. And then it should, once it's all done, it should recognize that it has a new uh, new unit on it why is that not firing up by itself it was supposed to fire up all by itself radar overlay charts radar huh look at that it's actually showing the radar but it didn't do the update so let me just go back let's learn about this together System information, software information, update software. Should we do that? Sure. Right now, this is running uh, software version 23.00. So let's just try that. Memory cleared slot one or two. I don't know which is one and which is two. Oh, yeah, there's two of them back there. Do, 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 do. Let's try two. It takes a long time complete. Must not be interrupted. Continue. Yes. Notice if uh, if not, remove power from the device while well, updates are in process. If power removed, the device may become unusable and may need to be replaced. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 
And I say, if power is removed, the device may become unusable and may need to be replaced. Okay. All right, so it's GPS map uh, 93, sorry, 943XSV. Okay, it's going up to version 24.10, and I think I said it was uh, version 23.00. Yeah, from in there, it just said that. In progress, and then I saw there's another one right below it. It said uh, radar. So I guess it's going to jump through these hoops. There we are, loading software. Ooh, so exciting. I'm glad I got the right uh, slot. There's nowhere on the instructions that I see uh, that it, you had to choose a memory slot, and neither did it say which one was what. <sighs> of course, that's all information come off the corporate site, and as most of you know, corporate sites suck. Okay, I'm just going to let this thing uh, run through its paces, and I will get back to you once it's done doing whatever it does. does. <laughs> Alrighty, it's doing its thing now. It's uh, GMR 18 HD Plus in progress, and that is the radar system. And it's doing it pretty quick. I mean, total lapse time, maybe five, six minutes altogether, so that's uh, more than acceptable. Look at that, just racking it up 76%, 85, 90. Ooh, I hear a boat running in the background, very promising. By the way, today is the first day of summer in uh, 2022. Look at that. Restart. Update complete. Beep. Uh, now, so far with this unit, um, up until now, obviously, it was only had the chart plating, chart plotting capabilities. And uh, I have only run it as far as our gas stock and back. Okay, so we go back to charts. So here we go. This is what I'm gonna have to do this in a less shiny day. But we have our nav charts. Uh, time of day 135, so that's correct. So back to home and radar single range warming up 36 35 big countdown now clearly i have no idea what i'm doing here so i'm going to go to home i'm going to try this overlay wow look at that that's what it's saying again we are at our home port marina so i'm just going to zoom in all right so this what i was misinterpreting as being a lot closer. That's definitely the land behind us. Let's see if I can move this out. Now I think it's all cluttered here because there are so many tall trees all the way around us. It is directly behind us, open until the land across the way. Yeah, and it's all trees. And remember, our uh, the radome is very close to the surface of the water. It's about nine feet off the surface of the water right here. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, it's picking up all the land in front of us and then that land is just higher than the water. As you can see right there is open water. If you can see that with the docks, the finger docks and then buildings across the way. So That's what it can see from its vantage point. And there is not a cloud in the sky out there today. So it's not going to be picking up any clouds or storms or whatever. Oops, sorry. Okay, cool. Works. Very happy. Nifty needle. Looking forward to see what it looks like underway. Yeah, so part of testing the systems on our first official trip is, look at that, got the Garmin uh, plotter, 
with the radar running in the background. Now today is a brilliantly clear sky day, just a few wispy clouds. So we're not gonna see too, too much, but I uh, am hoping that we will at least have the company of one other boat out in the lake. So I'll show you what that looks like on the plotter. And not only that, but this beautiful Garmin depth finder. And as I mentioned to you guys in the past, the whole reason that I only got the uh, plotting, the charting capabilities, as well as the radar on this, because I didn't want the, the screen cluttered up with anything else. So that's why I got the standalone Garmin depth finder. Some people call it a fish finder, but I don't see any fish right now, but they are out there. So I'm happy with that, because this thing will show me my depth, shows me the voltage, and as well, it shows the time, because this actually has a built-in GPS, and you can kind of draw your own not really charts but you can if you go to a fishing spot because this is what it's more marketed towards you can uh, put in a location it will track it'll uh, keep a root of your track and so that is all good to go for that um, but again I only need it for the depth and I love to see the bottom contour as you can see we are going progressively deeper in the water here now that we have uh, exited the marina area and out onto the open lake yeah, so happy with that. Very happy with that. And yeah, let's see what it shows us. Now you see this thing, I haven't figured it out yet because I haven't figured it out. I just got the radar uh, fully working installed earlier this week. So Anchor Girl and I did take a very, very short cruise on the first day of uh, summer. Oh yeah, right on. And there's another one up in distance. And you can see this is the track that it laid down because we went out because the sun was setting there and I'll show you some beautiful sunset shots that we got that day, longest day of the year. And then we just cruised around at speed. You can actually look at that, see? June 21st, 8.45 p.m. And I'm sure I can figure out what the date was or sorry, what the speed was at that time too. Um, so yeah, that was the extent of it. That was Anchor Girl's first, first trip ever out on this boat, driving the boat. And today is going to be our first adventure on the boat. Oh, the fishies are here. See, now that we're in 18 feet of water, there's lots of fishies out there. Down there. Down below the boat. So here we are at the end of this project. And forgive me if you notice that my suntan has turned darker, lighter, darker, and it's become sunny, cloudy, and cloudy again because uh, this project, I think I mentioned before, was done over a number of different days simply because I didn't have time to invest all at once to do everything all at the same time. So, And remember, if you are considering buying new electronics or upgrading electronics like I did for your own boat, don't forget to look down the description to the link to raytech.ca. Greg at Raytech was super fantastic, most helpful, uh, especially getting me this stuff in a timely manner and offering any assistance that he could. Um, again, really, really happy. I'm really happy that we want the Garmin. Now, Raytech represents uh, Garmin as well as other brands. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So if you're not necessarily a Garmin fan, which I have become, uh, you can look at their site and see what else. And don't forget that just all you have to do is mention the Boogaboo crew, tell them that you saw this video, and mention a discount and see what they can do for you. Yeah, but for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned maybe a little bit about uh, <laughs> the effort it takes to install this stuff. Actually, it was it's pretty straightforward, just time consuming like anything else working on the boat. Um, so yeah, hopefully you uh, learned a little bit and if not, got just a little bit of entertainment out of my video. And yeah, see what else we can find out about this uh, these Garmin items as we move forward. As always, I look forward to your comments and I will see you on the next one, my friends. Cheers.